like asking more things about you guys' music and everything. Okay, I, I saw that we follow the same like big bands, Ghost and Carnifex. Oh, Carnifex. Yeah. yeah. Back in the day. No Carnifex for where, where I want them to wait for them. And they were all big dudes eating carne asada. <laughs> we, we, shared a, we shared a band room and they would, we were downstairs or upstairs and they, they would pull us out of band room and we'd just smell it. We're like, yes, we're going to unplug and go to another chair. Love Paul, but great dudes, man. They're killing it last day. Sean's the man, dude. Drummer. And I saw them one day performed with Chelsea Grin. I was so, so happy. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, they're both my favorite. Yeah, they're doing really well. Yeah. I was like so excited too when um, the singer of Carnaflex is, um, yeah, the live stream and he answered one of my questions. I was so happy. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. Um, so who are you guys' musical influences? Uh, for death metal, it's Candle Force. Uh, gotta say Vital Remains. And it's hard. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with, I mean, it's cheesy, but Pantera. It's not cheesy at all. I mean, wearing, wearing black metal makeup is saying Pantera. <laughs> but uh, I can't help it, I was 12 and I just... It morphed into the heaviness that I needed from Metallica. I don't know. Not that I dislike any Metallica, any big four guys, but Pantera. <laughs> it brought it through for me. I was like, I want that crunch somewhere else. Where can I get it? You can always go in the air. you go? I can only think of a couple right now, but like death was like a huge growing up, like it's more Biggie Trucker. Stuff like that. Really influenced death as well. Uh, Chuck Shoulder changed me as a person. Uh, actually, Marcus was a major influence. Uh, for especially vocally, which I take with me today. I'm not influenced really by black metal vocals, more by Marcus. Uh, but uh, on the black metal side of the band is uh, out of Germany called Aurora. And they are by far my most, I think, graphically and something just you know, when I have this fear, I can't touch it. Um, so I just remember hearing that word, and I was absolutely floored. I'm not, I was just floored from it. But otherwise, a lot of the early uh, 2000s, late 90s, um, I get, I'll get stuck for this, uh, Cradle, early Cradle, love, still love it, uh, early Jimmy, still love it, so it shines through the influence, but um, I, uh, I love a lot of English work, Orna, all those guys, Hobbs Off, so if I were to pick one today, I'd pick like, a lot of English work. <laughs> Also, Diabolical Masquerade, I forgot to say. Diabolical Masquerade. Old Man's Child. What am I Old saying? Man's Old Man's Child. Old Man's Child. way ahead of all of them, actually. So, this is doing so much, it didn't even come off. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's... But yeah, Old Man's Child. Revelation 666 was like... Same. So, for you guys' as vocals, what do you... Yes. What's like your warm-ups? Like, how do you guys warm up for, to do your vocals? Or how do you do your vocals? Scream. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really have any like uh, warm up routine or anything like that. Um, I don't know if the other guys do, but I just like just go for it. Make, make my voice hurt as much as possible and then just go with it. Fuck it. Yeah, I don't really have like a warm up. I don't know how you guys do. Anybody does warm up because like, I look at my ability to sing like a health bar, like a video game. If I use it before the show, it's not. It's not opera where it's going to get better and better and better. I have a literal window of time that I can do this sound okay, and that's when I'm on stage. There's no way I'm going to be off stage wasting it or whatever. But real singers can, I guess. I just I can. Like, I'll get ten screams. If I scream <laughs> once, I'll get nine screams on stage. I promise you. <laughs> yeah, I, I do a lot of like, breath work beforehand. Um, and like a lot of humming actually, like grunt humming, um, just to get the diaphragm going. Um, especially playing drums and vocals, you have to really open up your lungs, otherwise you run out of gas really quick. Um, so yeah, I, I do a lot of breath work beforehand. Just deep breaths, grunting, humming, open up the throat, hopefully get things moving. Um, by the time we get behind the kit and start singing, it's all flowing as it should. Actually, I have friends that are in 
oh, this grindcore band, and they live in Florida, but it's um, my friend's kids and their son, so it's all three of them, and their their vocals are really, really good. They're called, um, well, they turned into MLM, but they're called Mommy's Little Monsters. Mommy's Little Monsters. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what is everyone looking to expect? Are you guys is like new music? Any like if you guys are planning to do any more shows? Yeah, yeah. We um, we just released uh, third full length in September. Yeah, yeah. September. Uh, it's a fusion. Um, it's everywhere right now. We're very really proud of it. Uh, it's a long time in the making, and uh, uh, to me, it's very special. And. Uh, in LA at a place called Los Lobos, if you've never played before. Big official morning star, dearly departed, it's going to be a really fun mixed genre show. That's all we have booked right now. We're going to get back and get some writing done and hopefully work on a new EP coming up soon, actually. We have some songs written ready to go, just got to go through the process and finalize everything. So, is there like any misconceptions about your guys' band or any type of band in the black metal drama? There's a stereotypical approach that comes with almost any black metal band. Um, as soon as you say you're black metal, everybody thinks you're Burzum or something like that. And, uh, you know, obviously we're very far from Burzum. Um, but uh, I, I think lyrically more than anything else, again, there's the face value and then there's the... You have to approach it from a point of intelligence and a point of understanding first before you react and, and take it for what it is. And um, I think if there's any misconceptions, it's probably that. Um, mostly, we, we, we get a bunch of shit for using a, a boy opinion on our second record about uh, Lucifer and this and uh, And I guess some other band. Or something or other bizarre. Yeah, I don't know, but you know, I, I actually came across it. It's a freaking like 300 year old painting, Francisco Boyle. It's a beautiful thing, and it frankly epitomized the record really well. I don't really give a fuck. I mean, the other shit, so we use it, we love it, we own it, and we, you know, that's what we're doing. So, uh, I don't really care, honestly, about any misconceptions. I don't really care about any of that. We're here to do us. We're here to write what we write and be who we are. And so I was like, that's it. I like the second band. <laughs>
So, to kindly introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Anthony Monteverano. I sing in a band called Mercic, and I live in Hollywood. And I'm back and forth from San Diego and Hollywood, uh, with the, uh, where I live. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Merzik basically started in uh, probably like 2006, the first show was 07, January, and um, uh, from San Diego, I'm originally from San Diego, so I built the band down here, and then uh, I moved to LA 10 years ago, so in 2014, and um, we've been, th three, three of the guys are down in San Diego still, and I'm in LA, and then our bass player is in Long Beach, so we're kind of split up between the uh, two-hour drive or whatever so uh, we come down mostly rehearse in San Diego it's easier for me to come down for them and then um, we'll just you know split up whatever needs to be done between the two cities you guys have um, your LP oh, Oblivion what can you tell me about it yeah um, so it started really with just one song which was Freak Girl um, and Brian uh, kind of started taking a little more leeway to writing guitar. Uh, back in the day, the other music was more like I was creating things first, and then the bands would come in, the other guys would come in and kind of fill out some stuff or whatever. Uh, but now, uh, this record is a lot of it's Brian actually writing guitar. And then uh, I said, dude, go with it, you know, like, um, just write, write, write. And so he sent me Free Curl, um, kind of like with, you know, drum ideas and the guitar and everything. It's almost like a track already. I was like, oh, this is rad! I love this, and um, so I wrote the uh, I wrote the you know the words, vocals, and all that, and then uh, then we got you know play to play all his parts on it, and so on and so forth. And then so I was like, man, I really like this style. So why don't we keep doing that? And so the record expanded into a lot of Brian uh, writing, you know, almost all the songs. I did the, the two slow ones mostly. But I didn't have a lot to do with the music on this record, just mostly the vocals and the words and all that. And, um, it's uh, it's cool, you know. It's it's got a, it's all over the place. And, uh, but it's a nice departure from all our old stuff because each record has kind of morphed and changed since then. So it's been cool. Uh, I, I listened to it and I watched the video to Freak Girl. I'm like, oh, this is really different, and interesting. I like it. Yeah. Like when, like when I started listening to. <laughs> Let's wait till he's okay. <laughs> he's in his own world. Like, yeah, he we're, is. We're clearly doing an interview and he's just talking. Yeah. So. It's okay. It happens. Yeah. Anyway, it's good. <laughs> like when I listened to Freak Girl and then I saw the video to it, yeah. I was like so engrossed to like how, how you sing the song and then like all the in instrumental parts. Like it, you're singing with kind of reminds me like a bit of like um, the singer from him. Oh. And who knows? Like, when I was reading the description, it was like gothic opera, and then for me, because even though, like, I I listen to more in, like, the gothic metal, and I guess when I listen to opera, I kind of just assume, like, more, like, Italian opera, <laughs> so this is, like, a new, different experience, but I really, really like the music. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense, because we, um, my, I come from a long line of Italian musicians, and, um, uh, I was raised on Beethoven and a lot of classical music that my father you know, listened to when I was a child and all that and so a lot of that does come out in the music and I had this idea when I was like 2003 to start writing this like Bach rock or opera you know classical you know metal whatever and um, so it does uh, you know it, sh it really should have those influences because that's kind of where it came from and we still try to make sure that we do that you know so tonight you'll see um, you know the keyboards Everything's real now. There's no, there's no tracks. We've got rid of the tracks and all that. Everything's played live again. That, that's how we used to do it back in 2007 for a while. And then we kind of minimized for a while, so we had to, we had to um, after that, we changed the lineup. We had to do tracks for a while, which still sounded cool, but now we're back to no tracks and doing everything for real. And it sounds good. You know, it's cool. But um, uh, yeah, Freak Girl is um, is a this cool song. I got my best friend Ashley in there, and um, some friends helped us made it up in LA. Uh, it was a fun experience. What's your favorite track, like, within all the LPs, EPs, and albums you've made? What's your oh, favorite? Um, I really like the, one of the new songs, the one I wrote, uh, Not Alone. Because um, I don't, we haven't done that in a while. It's like a slow song that's really passionate and, like, just really showcases my vocals and I'm very emotional with it. And, um, 
Other than that, uh, I always like to search for Surreal, which was off of our uh, first uh, EP, 